Hi, welcome back to the shop. My name is Greg Gimlick. I do product evaluations and electric flight articles for Model Airplane News and also write the electric column for Model Aviation and Park Pilot magazines. Today the purpose uh, of our getting together is to look at a computer battery analyzer 2 from West Mountain Radio. And I brought it into the office from the shop because I want to be able to video the computer screen and the one out in the shop is an old computer with a CRT and you'll see a lot of lines going by. So this way we'll get a better shot of the computer screen. Uh, I'm going to apologize, most of it's going to be shots of the screen and just you'll hear me talking in the background. Hopefully you'll be able to see uh, just what all this tool does. I agree with Red Schofield uh, of the Battery Clinic and this thing is just a, a great thing for any electric flyer to have. It allows you to analyze your batteries, track their life and their uh, discharge curves and all that on a computer and allows you to actually set up the same parameters so each time you test you get the exact same conditions. I'm going to kind of rush through this to, to get it online because they've just come out with a major software update and uh, if you update or upgrade to the pro version uh, for the first 90 days it's only I think $40 instead of $100 so uh, I want you to be able to see kind of what you can do get it online give you a feel for it so if you want to take advantage of that first 90 day offer, and I think that began like last week, uh, which was the week before Thanksgiving, so uh, you should have plenty of time to get in on it. So what I'm going to do is uh, first show you the device, and basically it's just a, a small fan, uh, heat sink, and all the magic stuff's inside. Now on one side there's a USB port, and on the other side there's a temperature probe that I'll plug in. Once you install the software, the only thing left to do is plug your battery into this, hook your uh, temperature probe in, and set up the screen. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in on the computer screen and we can uh, show you how to get started with that. So be right back. with is the, the main screen to set up a test. And you can leave this in auto check. Uh, it shows that I upgraded to the CBA Pro version. And there's certain things you have to set as you uh, begin your test, or before you begin your test. And it only takes a couple of minutes, but there's some important items here. You have to set the battery type. There's alkaline, carbon, zinc, lead acid, said lithium iron phosphate. I've gotten a couple of questions about that, just what is a lithium iron phosphate battery? That's your A123 cell. Uh, that's the chemical makeup of the cell. So uh, if you're using A123 batteries, uh, lithium iron phosphate. And lithium ion, lithium poly, NICAD, and nickel metal hydrides. So there's everything you have. Right now I've got a 5S pack hooked up, and uh, they're live poly, so we click that. You have to set in the capacity in amp hours. Uh, so I've got a 4,000 milliamp pack, which means that's 4 amp hours. So we'll just set that up there to 4. We have five cells. You want to verify. It should auto-detect it. You want to verify that it is five cells. Uh, they set the default voltage for a five-cell pack for, uh, for 18 and a half volts. And they want to know the weight of the pack. And I'm 595 grams. So that's 0.595 kilograms. And that's important later if you want to do one of the uh, Ragone tests uh, for energy density in that. Then it wants to know the test name. So if you've named a battery, and we'll just call this a HeCell 5S pack, and it's uh, number one, and I'll space, and I'll do a number one to show it's the first test. So it's a HeCell 5S number one, and this will be the first test. Cut off voltage on it. Uh, they select 14 volts. Uh, I'm actually going to go up and put in 15 volts uh, just because I don't want to take it down below 3 volts a cell. Uh, the discharge test amplifier, if you've got an additional amplifier uh, which is an add-on device which allows you to do a high current discharge uh, well above the 150 amp uh, or 150 watt capacity of the standard unit. I have no amplifier so that's checked. Uh, test amps, it's going to do a 1C discharge at 4 and I'm going to graph amp hours and I do have the optional temperature probe, which I'll stick on the battery pack. And so down here I'll just check graph temperature. 
Over here it shows the actual voltage of the pack, right up here. And it shows the temperature of the pack. And as we click the start button, it pops up. The test will begin. Now this pack is not fully charged, so when it hits it with the, the load, you can see it's dropping right down. This is just a pack I'd run some tests on, and I left it sitting in here. So you're going to see it's going to quickly hit the discharge point and cut off here in just a second. But you can see that it graphs the temperature in real time. Test complete. Disconnect the battery. Don't leave it hooked up. Uh, there's a slight drain, so they advise you not to do that. What we're going to do is I'll pull up some of the tests and I'll show you how the program can analyze those for you. And we'll be right back. All right. We're back. We've got just plain screen and I want to look at some of the tests I've done. Now most of my tests are on a computer out in the garage and I don't have the network running this morning. So I've got some tests that were on this computer and you just come in and open up and go to your directory and I've got some A123 packs here I was doing. So let's just open one of those up and see. And here's the full discharge curve. And it shows up here it's an A123 6S pack. It's my number two pack. It's the first charge of that pack. And it's six A123 cells, lithium iron and phosphate. At their 2300 milliamp and I did a discharge set at 5 amps and I graphed the temperature also. And here you can see the temperature uh, and this little spike right here is because it was laying on my desk and I forgot to hook it up so I quick hooked it up and the battery is a little warmer. So there's the temperature graph. Here's the normal discharge curve you'd expect to see the knee where it is it drops off and it looks to be that those cells are, are doing pretty well. Now the interesting thing is you can go anywhere along here and you'll get a little highlighted spot and it'll show you where it is and it'll show you the actual reading of where you are on the X and Y axis. And that just helps you along a little bit. Uh, you can see I'm at 18.9 volts right at this point and I'm at uh, 1 uh, amp hour at that point also. So if you want to see about where you really drop off I can see the power starts to drop off there at about 18.6 volts and uh, about just under 1700 uh, milliamps it starts to drop off and then you know it does the dive. Now if you've got multiple tests on a battery and you want to see it you go up here and select overlay it'll open back up and let me see my number two test I did on that see how it compares to that one and it'll show it up here number one pack is in black number two pack showed up in red and it shows temperature graph they stayed right on the same which you'd expect and the power. And those two packs are pretty closely matched. Here's another test. Uh, here are two 5S LiPo packs. And this comes from my giant scale pits. And I run two motors that are ganged to a single gearbox. So it's very important that the two packs I run in this setup are absolutely identical. Recently, uh, one pack has been a little warmer coming off than the other and there's been kind of a strange power uh, change in the airplane towards the end of the flight. So what I did was I ran a couple of discharge curves after I brought them in and charged them up and here I can see that my one pack in red is going out further than the other one. So right in here is where I'm getting that power drop off because the one pack is done. The other pack is still trying, still got some power, but now you're starting to drive the other motor because this one is putting more voltage to the motor on the left than the one is to on the right at the same point in time. Uh, this is not a good situation and this shows me why. I can see which pack is uh, here. I'll run this through some cycles now on the test stand and see if it gets better. It probably won't. They don't seem to come back. It's not like the old NICAD and uh, nickel metal days. So this is another good uh, example of, of what you can tell if you're flying one pack in an airplane pulling it out flying another pack in an airplane and for some reason it just doesn't see the same or seem the same in power something like this will show you why 